Hi everyone. It is March 7, 2018. This posted March 6, 2018. More and more studies are showing that we are really having a fertility crisis, not just in the United States, but in a lot of Western nations. Why male fertility is in crisis. So I come over here and I read this article and I am I, I, I don't know what to make of this world anymore. I don't know what to make of ordinary people who read articles like this and don't question an awful lot of what they read. Health experts are warning of a crisis in male fertility that they fear is making it harder for couples to conceive. A problem they say is compounded by a lack of scientific understanding. Yeah, the average sperm count has dived by 52% in the past four decades. Yet, scientists don't know why. They don't know why the sperm count is falling or even whether the decline is reducing fertility. Even though logic says it might be. Yeah, logic, okay. People put scientists still on such a pedal, pedestal. They, they think of them as gods. Oh, they're so smart, scientists. Yeah, mm -mm, no. Everything's a mystery to them today. Those mainstream media scientists. Mystery, mystery. Hmm. We don't understand why the sperm count is falling. And yet mainstream media has posted an awful lot throughout the years showing reasons why it's falling. Like Wi-Fi, you know, those laptops. They damage sperm. Yeah, what Wi-Fi study shows. Those laptops are killing sperm. But then you, you do a search and you will see that there are, well, let me just show you. Hmm. Okay, so, and Google is really like the number one search engine that puts up such conflicting information. It is a wow. Can Wi-Fi kill your sperm? Yes, an Argentinian study published in Fertility and Sterility found that electromagnetic frequencies such as those from Wi-Fi can kill sperm. So it's not just the laptop. Hey, you guys, you're in these Wi-Fi environments. Guess what? The Wi-Fi is killing your sperm. Hey, kids in Wi-Fi schools killing the sperm. Guys, your cell phone in your front pocket right next to uh, uh, your private parts, that part you love so much. Well, the electromagnetic microwave frequencies are microwaving your sperm, killing them. But look at this. All right, so yes, you have an awful lot. Smartphone radiation won't kill sperm as radio waves. This is Daily Mail. Daily Mail out of the UK. Smartphone radiation won't kill sperm. No. Okay. All of the studies that show it will kill sperm. Now we have an expert from Georgetown University explaining that radio waves and smartphone have really low energies, making it near impossible to damage cells and affect a man's sperm count. Hey, yeah, <laughs> give that guy credibility. Listen to that guy and discount all of the studies that have shown throughout the years that Wi-Fi laptops kill sperm. But listen to this Georgetown University guy. Jesus. I this world is really unbelievable. So scientists don't know why the sperm count. Look, you know, I've done I've done videos on this before. I've done a number of videos. You know, the the importance of research. Why is it important for you to do your own research and to get a basis of knowledge? of all of the toxins that we are subjected to now, the importance is so that you can discern, even just in one article, the bullshit from the non-bullshit. Like, 
I'll show you an example. Bacon. Bacon and sausage. That's killing your sperm. Wow. Okay. Where, uh, where did they get this information? Oh, they got it from the Harvard School of Public Health. Researchers. They interviewed men visiting a fertility clinic and found those who ate just one piece of sausage or slice of bacon a day saw a 30% decrease in normal sperm. Instead, their sperm was more likely to be misshaped and puny. On the flip side, men who ate fish, they had much healthier sperm quality. So guys, don't eat the processed meat. Now look, you shouldn't be eating processed meat anyway. But we have these so-called prestigious institutions come out with their studies. They interviewed men and determined that because they ate one piece of sausage or a slice of bacon a day? Really? Can you not see how unbelievably stupid that is? But apparently the person writing this article couldn't see it. So he's writing this or she's writing it. Um, Oh, it's the Harvard School of Public Health. Well, we've got to believe them, right? No, we don't. We have these so-called prestigious institutions coming out with the most inane. Uh, uh, um, it should hit every adult right smack in their face if they have the ability to critically think that they're reading something so profoundly stupid. It doesn't matter if it's come out of the Harvard School of Public Health. But they do use these institutions to come up with reasons for why sperm count is low or the incredible disease, illness, syndromes that are exponentially increasing. You got to have a reason, right? It can't be all of the toxins that we're subjected to. It can't be all of those pesticides and herbicides and how dangerous our environment has become. Our water is poisoned. The air is poisoned from the aerosol spraying, the climate change. Oh, we've got to geoengineer the atmosphere. We've got to prevent climate change. Everything's based on a lie, but we, we are now saturated in so many dangerous poisons. Wi-Fi. They can't, they can't say it's that. So they have to come up with something stupid. So guys, hey, don't eat the bacon anyway. It's not good for you. But um, <laughs> you guys, you've been eating bacon and sausage for a very long time. And your sperm was fine, but now it's not. So what else? Cash register receipts. There are coated with BPA. BPA, it, it leaches into your bloodstream, goes through your skin, BPA, um, bis, bisphenol, bisphenol, very dangerous. It's also in packaging, food packaging, and it leaches into the foods that we eat. And it is particularly saturated in foods that are acidic. So those tomatoes in cans, you're going to find a higher level of BPA in your canned tomato than you will in another product. But the levels of BPA are very high anyway. So BPA has been linked to lower sperm counts and quality. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> I just had a coughing fit, but canned products, all canned products, they use BPA. Um, plastics and even sex toys. That's right. Anything with vinyl, they leach phthalates, plastic softening chemicals. It's in cleaners. It's in scented soaps. It's in shampoos. 
It's in a vinyl shower curtain. You know, so when you open up those vinyl shower curtains, wow, are they toxic, huh? Well, you hang them up, you try to air them out, but you get into the shower and they begin to emit more phthalates when they're hot, when they're heated up, you know, from that shower. We are so, <laughs> everything, almost everything put on the market now, you have to be very, very wary of because it is causing, well, cancer, allergies, birth defects, and infertility. Now, it's not just with men, but infertility as well with women. Um, and what you can do is avoid all products with fragrance. Avoid all products with fragrance. Um, get the uh, unscented products. Don't get scented deodorants and shampoos and detergents and because those are the products that are most toxic. Um, what else? Chemical lace produce, chemicals, pesticides on fruit, on produce, on produce, causing lower sperm counts. Heated car seats, heating pads, um, not good for your testes, but not good for anybody because they emit electromagnetic frequencies. Contaminated fish, PCBs, it, the, the group of toxic compounds used extensively in the electricity industry, well, they are apparently banned, but PCBs have pretty much saturated our environment as well. Avoid fish. Try to get wild fish. Non-stick chemicals, you know, those pots and pans that people love to cook in. Well, guess what? When they're heated up, they are leaching out a chemical that you are cooking and then you eat it. So that too causes your sperm count to die and your store-bought microwavable popcorn. It is saturated. The coating of the bag, the inside, saturated in non-stick chemicals. And then you eat that when you eat your popcorn. Natural gas drilling. Uh, living near a natural gas drilling site, benzene emitted in high amounts, high levels, from the hydraulic fact fracturing uh, compressor stations. You're breathing it in if you live next to that place and there's even benzene laced home cleaners. Scented candles. Don't use scented. These are carcinogenic. Benzene pollution. Flame retardants. Uh, avoid furniture, rugs, and clothing and especially for your infants you get these cribs with these mattresses that are flame retardant they're incredibly poisonous and even California of course California has a flammability law which mandates which mandates the dousing of uh, foam and furniture and rugs to be covered in these toxic chemicals. So when you put them in your home, your flame retardant furniture and crib and rugs and whatever else, that the flame retardant chemicals leach off, they create dust and you breathe it in. So yes, men living in higher household dust concentrations of the chemicals, <clears throat> Again, a coughing fit. Well, men, 
you have displayed lower sperm counts and declining thyroid hormone levels. Preservatives in, in uh, foods, even in cosmetics, cleaners. Well, we need to go back to natural living where you're not buying processed foods and you're buying local produce, local. Because even that organic produce that is coming from far away, they stick it in the trucks and then they gas them because they don't want, you know, any of that produce to show up damaged. So where can you find real organic? The only place is if you know your local farmer producing that produce and the fruit. That's the only way that you can feel assured that you're getting organic food. Now, the organic food is also, unfortunately, laced with all of the chemtrails all of the chemicals and heavy metals that they're spraying and the viruses and the bacteria and the fungi. So clean it really, really well before you eat it. And the only way to avoid that is to find a place that is producing all of their fruits and produce in a greenhouse. Ain't this fun? Um, added sugars in foods and drinks. I'll leave you with this, Jesus. Talk about, talk about how sick we are. Reversing course. Diet Pepsi goes all in on aspartame. This was posted a couple of weeks ago. Diet Pepsi, because they faced a consumer backlash when they got rid of aspartame? Really? They... Consumers were upset that Pepsi no longer was using aspartame in 2015. So because they were so upset, it's making a full reversal. And once again, they're going to be using aspartame. Yeah. Do you believe that? I don't believe it. I First of all, you ask a consumer, what is aspartame? And I guarantee that nobody will even know. So, once again, another lie. Pepsi has just decided to put that toxic ingredient back into your diet Pepsi. And aspartame and all of these um, artificial sweeteners kill sperm. This is what we're doing. And we are doing it to ourselves. Ignorance, willful ignorance, having a population that just doesn't seem to care much about their own health. So we're now stuck in this toxic nightmare. But aspartame, my God, you, you think you're going to be losing weight <laughs> drinking Diet Pepsi? Really? Well, what has aspartame been linked to? Um, cancer, heart disease, dementia, stroke, increased appetite and cravings, metabolic disease, weight gain, obesity. All right, I will link below to these articles. But guys, if you want to have children, I suggest you do research, find out uh, what is causing your sperm to die. Wi-Fi, laptops, cell phones in front pocket, um, and then all of the toxins that you are subjected to. It's hard to get around this, guys because virtually everything now on the market is toxic, dangerous to our health.